really amazing to watch what a unified group that we have. And so what a Twist of Fate has done is put us all together. It's allowed us to pool our data, pool our resources. Uh, the clinic in the United States and a Twist of Fate, we can gather all this information. We can inform patients about their management and we can provide treatment for those complications. But with the nonprofit and all the other mothers behind me, I didn't feel alone anymore. Hello everybody. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present the plan we have with Andrea and explain to you what is a patient-focused drug development and why we want to do it. So um, why do you think we want to uh, go on drug developments? Uh, first, the treatment you receive are not adapted specifically or designed specifically for ATS and there is an unmet medical need. So you would say the basic science of ATS is not fully understood, but that doesn't mean that you cannot start finding treatments. I work with other foundations that are polygenics, for example, and they don't even know exactly which genes are involved in their disease, but they are already starting screening for treatments. Why are they doing that? It's because they know exactly what is needed for their disease. They know how to measure it, and they know at which point they can say that a drug is effective or not. So this is exactly what we want to do for ATS, prepare you to go to drug development. So for the next few minutes, I'm going to show you a presentation, an extract of a presentation to, that explain you the, the basics of uh, drug development. The goal of most foundations are to cure or find treatments and improve patients' daily life. The purpose of this presentation is to help foundations understand the different steps and requirements necessary to transition to a drug development support. To be active and find a cure, foundations need to be involved in drug development. And at a certain stage in the process, we'll need the intervention of a pharmaceutical company. We will guide you on how to be prepared to convince private companies to invest in your disease. The first step is to understand the process to get to a treatment or a cure. How to develop and bring a drug to the market, who the stakeholders are, when to interact with the different stakeholders. The road to a drug on the market is often represented by a horizontal flowchart. Starting from investigation to characterize the disease, then molecules, also called chemical compounds, are tested for the disease, undergo modification for optimization and safety to become a potential drug. These different steps are called the preclinical development. When the optimized chemical compound fulfills the requirement to be tested in human, the clinical phases are performed before going to the market. Where are the different steps performed and by whom? Research is executed in scientific academic centers, mainly universities and NIH, and is focused on the biological characteristics of the disease, so performed by biologists. The first step really concerning drug is when you enter the preclinical studies. It is performed in either biotechs, pharmaceutical companies, CROs, or specialized governmental organizations such as NCAT, and sometimes in academic labs. For successful preclinical studies, you need to have pharmacologists or biologists specialized in pharmacology working together with medicinal chemists and admit toxicologists. The clinical phase are performed in hospitals by clinicians. The drug is brought to the market by a pharmaceutical company with the business development necessary. The process is regulated by legal, financial and human aspects. 
The patient through the foundations and patient advocacy groups need to be very actively involved in the whole process. They are the support and beneficiaries and should be at the center of the process. The FDA should not be reduced as the judge at the end of the process. They are a tremendous support all along the drug development. They will help you address the right issues from the beginning, as I will explain in this presentation. And of course, the pharmaceutical and biotech companies are the major power in the drug development process and manufacturing. When to prepare. The process seems to be linear over time, and some may be error to take it that way, losing a lot of time and efficiency, which is not the best way to convince a company to invest in you. Prepare all the tools necessary for each step before you get to that step. For example, if nothing is ready to measure clinical outcomes, the FDA won't let you put your patient at risk by trying a new drug. And the pharmaceutical companies know it. You need to come to them with at least a partial completion of the requirements. This takes years. Instead of first testing molecules in model and when an interesting molecule is found, starting to think about the next step and realize it will take years, start preparing the clinical stages before or at the same time as you start the academic science. The advice from the FDA are for starting points. The most important thing is to start with a consensus definition of the disease. This is fundamental before anything else. You can also establish diagnostic criteria and care guidelines. For that, organize clinicians workshop. Take the occasion to contact and gather clinician specialists for your, of your disease from different continents if you can. That would help increase the patient volume and stimulate the attention and the wish to help for your disease. The second point is define what your specific rare disease needs now. Most rare diseases have large and diverse phenotypes. Your patients are the expert in their disease. They will give the information for drug development and evaluation. The FDA advises to define the critical issues, the most important symptoms for the patients in their daily lives. It will facilitate the decision to approve a drug if it is sure, proven, that the target of the drug will be a benefit and change the patient's life. As an indication to what to look for, you can follow the guidelines from the FDA. I indicated the website page here. Mainly, identify the symptoms and impact of the disease on daily life. The current treatment options, the important disease subpopulation, or patient characteristics that should be represented, the phenotypic and severity variation. And if there is a need to focus on any particular subpopulation, such as children, for example. How to get all this information? The ideal would be to perform an externally led patient focused drug development, PFDD, with the FDA help. An acceptable option is to gather as many patient, caregivers, clinicians as you can and follow the guidelines. Take into consideration that teenagers have a tendency to lower the intensity or importance of their symptoms. The patient reported outcomes, the, what we call the PROs, have to be carefully evaluated. So I hope that now you understand the context of uh, drug developments. So to summarize the, the key points is that if you want to test drugs on patients, you need the FDA approval. So you want to have all the points ready so that they give you the approval to start testing in clinic the, the new drug on patients. So for that, we need to target the right issues and measure the right benefits. So you will say, well, you have scientists, you have clinicians for that. No, we need you. Because what the FDA thinks, and, and they're right, is that the endpoints are not necessarily what the key opinion leader or clinicians usually measure. It should be the points that matter 
for the patient. We need also to be clear on your perspective on the balance between the benefits and the risk that you are going to take or ready to take to get those benefits. So in fact, is the new drug going to improve your life or make it, make it um, a nightmare? And we need to define also with the clinicians and with you what we are looking for. So at what endpoints, at what amount of action of the new drug do we decide that the drug is effective? So it doesn't go to the next. So the big plan over the next few years with Andrea and with uh, Twist of Fate for the ATS patients are first to collect a comprehensive patient input. So as many data as we can for every one of you on the burden of the disease and the current therapy. Then we need to develop a holistic set of impacts that are the most important for you, for the patients. Then from that, we will identify and develop good measures for the, for, for the impact, for the, what, the set of impacts. And that will be used for the clinical trials to, treat the, to, to test the drugs in, on patients. We are going to incorporate the measure into endpoints. So determine really when we can say that a drug is effective or not. How are we going to do that? Uh, so we are, we are going to send you some questionnaires and ask a lot of questions and try to gather everything. So the questions are going to be on demographic, history of diagnosis, uh, the main medical issues, the impact on everyday life, and the balance, as I said, between risk and benefits. We are going to ask two groups of people, the ATS, ATS patients or their representative and the carriers of the gene mutation. So the legal aspects of the data we can gather, the experience data, uh, who can collect that? The patients, the caregivers, the researchers and the patients advocacy group. So twist of fate. What are exactly defined as experience data? Well, that includes uh, experience, perspectives, uh, the needs and priorities of the patients relate, related, for example, uh, to this list, but we can also add other things like the symptoms of, their, of the condition and the natural history, the impact of the condition on your functioning and quality of life, the experience with treatments, that's very important, the input on which outcomes are important to you, uh, the patient preference for outcomes and treatments, and the relative, relative importance of any issue as defined by the patient. So the next step that we are going to do is that um, you are going to fill up a questionnaire, I hope. Uh, we are going to do it printed or online then we are going to have some virtual individual interviews to further down and deeper the, the questions. And then we are going to have an hybrid online and in-person patient forum where there will be an analysis of the questionnaires, patient panels, discussions and testimony on the impact of ATS on life and the risk and benefit balance. So I hope I convinced you and I would like, I really would like you to join and participate to um, the patient focus forum. Um, the forum will get on the drug development. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>